Good afternoon, pilot teachers, and good afternoon, students. Thank you. Sit down. You would have also noted that we are looking at the last topic or the last section now on our work on volcanicity. So to finish off the work on volcanicity, I'd like us to recap on what we have covered in our previous lesson, and I will give you the activity that I'd like us to do for our lesson today. Looking at our last lesson, we looked at other features which are also formed as a result of volcanic activities beside volcanoes. And those features that we looked at in our last lesson were formation of geysers. I also explained with the information from the monitor how geysers are formed. Your task was to ensure that you have that information in your exercise book, explaining with the help of well-labeled diagram that particular feature. We also looked at the formation of hot springs, how they are formed in association with volcanic activities. We looked at fumaroles, also mentioned that for fumaroles it is mainly the releasing of steam from volcanoes or volcanic vents. But note that the difference will be if sulfur is also emitted and you have an area whereby yellow deposits of sulfur are around the vent, then we say that particular feature is a solfatara. And that's what we also looked at yesterday or in our last lesson. We looked also at formation of lava plateaus or basaltic plateaus. We had a map of the world and that world map showed us some of the um, common basaltic plateaus or lava plateaus we have around the world. Okay, looking at those, those were some of the other features which are also associated with volcanicity that we have covered and we were supposed to ensure we understood their formation and the relationship between volcanic activities and their formation. Today, what I'd like us to look at now will be the effects of volcanic activities on the environment and the people. And for us to be able to complete that particular topic, we are going to do some discussions. And from the discussions, you are going to make a list of the effects of volcanicity and volcanic activities on the environment and the people. And then from that list, you are going to write an essay and your essay should title Effects of Volcanic Activities on the Environment and the People. But for us to be able to write that essay, we need to discuss to come up with a list. And from that list of discussions that we come up with then, we will use that to construct the essay. Having understood a little bit now about volcanoes and the other features associated with volcanic activities, we can now be able to write an essay, and in that essay we can look at the advantages of volcanic activities to the environment as well as the disadvantages, and we can also look at the advantages of volcanic activities to the people and the disadvantages. And that is what we are going to work on for our discussion. I would want you to spend at least 10 minutes on the discussion, so you work in groups to come up with a list of effects on the environment. And then from the list, you are going to construct or you are going to write an essay using the list from your discussion. So if we look um, around where we are sitting, I would want you to work in force or you could work in pairs. And the first part of our lesson is our discussion and our list. What are we going to actually discuss and list on? The effects and the advantages and disadvantages of volcanic activities on the environment and on the people. From that list then, we will move on to activity two, and that is to write an essay, of which your essay, I would want at least minimum of two pages that you are going to write, and the two page are your exercise book page. Minimum, that means not less than two pages. Okay, so in your discussions, come up with as many effects, advantages and disadvantages that you can think of. Don't forget, it is not only looking at volcanoes, we are looking at volcanic activities. So it will also include features that we have covered, intrusive, extrusive features that we have covered in the topic on volcanicity. I'm going to want you now to get into those groups and I would want you to discuss first of all, before you come to sitting down individually, to writing your 
essay. Okay, our group discussions. You move now or you turn to the people sitting next to you and we can start on with the discussion. The guideline is on the monitor. You can use that guideline for your discussion. Ten minutes and then I will stop you after ten minutes and then you can sit down to work on your essay construction. In your exercise book, not the A4 paper. We are going to discuss them. Could that be an advantage? So there are, there are good things yes, about volcanic activity as well as the disadvantages. And that's what you are making a list of. And then later you are going to put it in a paragraph or essay form to explain each of those. Okay, according to the time, that's your 10 minutes. And the next part now of the work is for you to individually, using what you have discussed now, you are going to write in your exercise book now an essay. And that essay should be based on the advantages and the disadvantages of volcanic or uh, volcanicity, sorry, or volcanic activity. So we are including all the features extrusive features and also intrusive features. Anything associated with volcanicity, we are going to use now to write the essay to say whether there is an advantage it has to the environment or people, or whether there are disadvantages it has to the environment and people. Okay, that will conclude our discussions, but maybe to help, help you along, sorry, to help you along, let's look at some of the information that um, I try to put together this information maybe will help you with your notes so that you can come up with your essay. You can decide whether those are disadvantages or advantages, but I'll go through it. First of all, under the heading on volcanic collapse. Sometimes a volcanic eruption takes place which causes the, the side of the volcano to collapse. Volcanic collapse close to sea level or underwater can cause huge waves of volcanic tsunami. And the collapse of a volcanic, uh, volcanic cone during the eruption of Krakatoa in 1883 caused tsunami which killed 30,000 people several hundred kilometers away on the coastlines of Java and Sumatra. And these waves may have been as high as 40 meters. So you think about it, could this be an advantage? Could it be a disadvantage? Maybe an idea, it might help you in your essay writing. We move on. Maybe another area you might want to think about and to look at will be volcanic gases. The escape of volcanic gases, even in minor eruption, can cause a real threat to local inhabitants. Some volcanic gases are extremely poisonous. Carbon dioxide, for example, only needs to be at levels of 0.4% of air for it to kill. Being a colorless, odorless, heavy gas, it can flood into low areas close to a volcano and kill the livestock and inhabitants. At even smaller concentrations, it can reduce plant growth also. Maybe something to help you in terms of whether it is an advantage or disadvantage, you can expand on it when you're writing your essay. Can also be threat to aircraft. An incident which occurred to a British Airways 747 flying from Kuala Lumpur to Perth on the 23rd of June 1982 when it flew through a dust cloud of the Galunggung volcano in Indonesia. The plane dropped for 13 minutes before the crew managed to restart the engines. 
Volcanic ash is not as visible to radar, to radar, the main aircraft navigational aids, as water droplets. Therefore, ash clouds do not appear on radar screens like rain clouds. So the plane having flown through would not have picked that up on the radar. Could that be an advantage or disadvantage? Okay, we look at volcanic aerosol. Volcanic aerosols, they produce a number of effects on the earth. The most visible of these are the post-eruptional optical effects, such as vividly colored sunsets, altered colors of celestial bodies, that's the stars and the planets, dulled starlight, rings around the sun, which are known as bishop's ring or rings, after Sereno Bishop, who first reported them from Hawaii, and colored twilight afterglows. And this is looking at volcanic aerosols and what it can actually produce. Again, it will be up to you to decide whether those are advantages or disadvantages. Then there is a question that is asked there. Why study volcanoes? And here it tells us that other than the obvious desire to know what risk any volcano poses to life, limb, and property, much of the Earth's richest agricultural land and many of the planet's mineral deposits are found in the vicinity of ancient volcanoes. Also, volcanoes have the potential to affect the planet's climate and can offer answers also to the formations of the Earth's primitive atmosphere. There are a couple of things that are mentioned there on why study volcanoes. We look at agriculture. Volcanic material, when mixed with organic matter, makes up the richest soils on Earth. It is no mistake that the most productive farming land is found in volcanic areas. And it is the main reason for people living so close to a potential geo geological hazard. As the Earth's human population expands, more and more people will rely on the rich volcanic agricultural land. We still have maybe two more to look at, or one more, this one and the next one. Volcanic deposits, or mineral deposits, sorry. And here we're looking at volcanic activities or activity is an important process in the concentration of a number of useful and or valuable minerals such as copper, silver, and gold. These deposits are either concentrated as part of the magmatic processes or by the secondary heating of groundwater in the volcanic pile to vast temperatures. Examples of those porphyry copper deposits and also the epithermal deposits. In Papua New Guinea, we have some of those deposits around the country in terms of the mines we have. Some of them have porphyry deposits and others have epithermal. But we'll discuss on resources in grade 12, and in grade 12, that's where we cover a little bit more on mineral deposits. Finally, from that information, geothermal power decide whether it is an advantage or a disadvantage, and it says here, in convectional coal or oil-fired power stations, the fuel is actually burned to heat water into steam, which then drives turbines, generating electricity. In volcanic areas, the amount of heat stored in rocks close to the Earth's surface produces also large reserves of superheated groundwater and steam, which can be tapped directly into the generator. Is that an advantage or disadvantage? That's up to you. Okay, this is to help you along now with your essay writing and your holiday work will be to ensure that you have your essay constructed in your exercise book and then we can check that when you come back after the holidays. That will also bring us to the end of our lesson and also the end of the term. Class, if you can now stand up. To the pilot teachers, our keyword for lesson 43 is volcanic activity.
And to the students, good afternoon and thank you and have a good term break.